Hey guys, welcome to episode number 562. Today is Monday, so it's Update Monday, and today we are continuing the renovation tour of the fish room. Last week, we tackled the 300 gallon turtle stock tank. This week, we are tackling the Beta Barracks, or the fry rack that is mounted to the wall behind me. Now, I built this thing about two years ago, and I've had it operating off and on for those two years. However, I shut it down completely after the holidays because I noticed a small leak starting to develop. And when I started to analyze the whole system, I found quite a few things that I can improve. So that's what we're gonna do today. But before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you like this content and also go check out myaquariumbox.com if you wanna help support this channel. All right, let's go take a look at what we've got and then what we're gonna do to fix it to get it back in operation. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right guys, so here is a look at the Beta Barracks at the wall mounted fry rack. This thing I built around two years ago and it functions as a place to hold all of my marina hang on breeder boxes. These things are fantastic. Usually you mount these to the side of your tank and they work great. I set up uh, an entire rack of these and essentially what I did was instead of connecting them to an aquarium, I laid them flat on the shelf, allowing the water to spill over into these gutters. And essentially how this whole system is hooked up is water is pumping from my 300 gallon stock tank um, for the turtles and that water is splitting off here. So some of it returns to the turtles uh, the rest of it goes up into this system and it pressurizes all of these half inch PVC pipes allowing water to drip into each one of these containers. Now this rack is set up to house uh, four of these large marina breeder boxes per shelf. You can put the medium sized ones or the small size ones on here as well, but I just had a bunch of the large ones, so that's how I set this up. Uh, the boxes themselves performed great, no problems there. There were two main issues with this rack, and it's the reason why this rack is currently non-operational. The first reason is, uh, in some cases, these lines started to clog up. And uh, if you put like a little drip emitter head on these, it happens really fast. If you take the drip emitter off and you just, you know, allow the water to drip in through the quarter inch airline hose, it happens slower. But the reason being uh, because the somewhat dirty water from the turtle tank is not completely filtered. It's not going through like a micron filter sock or anything. So some of the debris that's in this barrel is ending up in these small water lines and eventually it just gets clogged up. And the first mistake that I made was I ended this water line. So on every level here, the water line is capped off and it's not allowed to continue. So what happens is all that debris just sort of builds up in the ends because all these are pressurized and when these things get opened sometimes they just get clogged. So the first part that I'm going to fix uh, for the return line here is to instead install a ball valve here. Uh, I've got my union and then I'm going to run one continuous loop of half inch PVC from one shelf to the next shelf all the way back down into this tank which would allow all of that heavier debris to just get flushed all the way through the loop and back in here and hopefully allow these to clog less quickly. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. The second thing is I'm going to address a leak problem that I had. Now, when I set this up originally, it worked flawlessly, but when I tore it down um, and dismantled it for uh, the holidays last year, what happened was everything dried up and it might have started to form some cracks and some places where some leakage could occur. And when it's connected to a 300 gallon body of water in that stock tank, even a small leak 
and something up here can turn into a major problem. So I wanted to avoid that. The two places where leaks can occur is in these vinyl gutters, these end caps aren't really well secured. So I put a little bit of epoxy uh, on the edges there. That is a failure point. I don't think it has failed there yet, but it certainly can. Uh, the bigger problem is with these bulkheads that are drilled through the shelf itself and connect basically um, the inside of the vinyl gutter to the outside of the uh, wooden shelf. And I did notice uh, small leaks occurring uh, around that location. And because this is wood, obviously we don't want it to rot over time. So we don't want even a small leak uh, occurring. Even though most of those drips are ending up in these gutters themselves, there are potential failure points that definitely need to be addressed in order for me to feel uh, comfortable with turning this system back on. So what do we do? We do a little model and a little test. So what you see here on the shelf in front of you is what I'm going to replace this system with. Now this is a three inch piece of PVC pipe which is way bigger than is necessary for the amount of water that's going to be traveling through here. But I chose a pipe that large so that I could cut out the top of it and allow me to just set these breeder boxes on the lip of that. So there's no way these are going to pull out um, away from the pipe itself. And this is going to act as a replacement for my gutter. And we've got the end caps, which will be uh, glued on as well. So this is basically one solid piece of pipe and it will run the four foot length from end to end here on the inside of the shelf. Those gutters will be taken out. And instead of running um, lines basically, you know, from shelf to shelf through the shelf, what I'm gonna do on the end instead is allow each of these four shelves to drain down to the right side here. Uh, and I've attached basically a one inch uni seal through my three inch PVC cap to a one inch pipe. And all of those one inch pipes are all gonna end um, over here on this side of the shelf. And they're all gonna drain down with a snorkel tube up top to allow airflow drain down into my barrel so that all the water exits into this barrel. If I can accomplish those two things, I think this is going to be completely leak proof and clog proof. So let's get going with the demolition here and then we'll start to rebuild this rack.
All right, guys, and here is the finished product. This was an all-day build, and it's close to finished. Obviously, the breeder boxes are not filled with water yet. Um, I need to wait for all of the PVC glue to dry everywhere, and usually that takes at least a few hours. Uh, I like to leave it overnight. So in the morning, I'll kick this thing on, I'll let all these fill up, and we'll do a big leak test. And if everything checks out, then next week we will certainly get some critters in these breeder boxes. So let's take a close up of all of the changes that have happened, starting over here with our return pump. Uh, I installed a one inch ball valve here and that has allowed me to shut the water off to the beta barracks or the breeder rack and allow the water to continue into the turtle tank so um, we're not you know, losing our cycle uh, on the turtle tank while this is all drying. So that's good. Then we've got a union here so we can disconnect this if we ever need to. It kicks down to a half inch PVC and as you'll notice, it enters here on the top of this first shelf, goes all the way over, and then kicks up one, and then goes over, and then kicks up one, then goes over, kicks up one, goes all the way over, and then it returns all the way back into the turtle tub uh, over there. That's the moving bed uh, filter for the turtles. So, all of the flow eventually makes its way to that um, 55 gallon barrel, except for the water that comes out of these drip nozzles. And I managed to salvage the half inch PVC here that already had these self-tapping valves in them, which was a big help. And this is essentially what each one of these setups looks like. Now, um, the three inch PVC, as you can see here, we've got the end cap. We've got a little uh, brace or a little stand on each end to make sure that the pipe stays the way it's supposed to. You can grab these tanks whenever you want them, uh, but they don't pull out accidentally because they hit against that lip, but they're actually sitting on the shelf itself. So all the weight is being carried by the shelf and uh, you can pick these up, you can carry them around, you can dump them out. Obviously these need to be cleaned before they go into service, but um, here is one that's fully set up. So when the water's turned on, the water's gonna drip through here. And what I've done is I took the little air lift that the uh, marina usually has that pulls water from your aquarium, and I just snipped it off and that allowed me to run that airline tubing through it, which allows me to basically um, secure this drip line to the breeder box. So you just put it exactly where it's supposed to go here, and then that's secured. Water can drip into this tub, and if, you, for whatever reason, I need to grab this tank, I can just grab this and just drop it and put it in the, um, the three inch PVC tube uh, and shut it off. So that is what everything looks like. I'm gonna upgrade all of my uh, hosing here to the silicone tubing. Uh, I think it, it lasts a little while longer. It stays pliable, which is good. We've got our Metalla filter material here to uh, sort of block our um, return back in or the overflow uh, of these tanks into the gutter back behind that makes sure that small fish don't uh, fall out we're gonna put the lids back on these eventually but we're gonna get all these cleaned up and ready to go so that is a look at the system you can see that three inch PVC on the back is just absolutely massive and there's no way that there's going to be any leaks through the ends. There's going to be no leaks through the uniseals that pop out the sides here 
And as you can see, we've got this one inch line open to the air, which allows you know our airflow. And then all of these three inch lines connect to this one inch line, which goes down and drains into the turtle tub here. So we've got a recirculating system. Everything is set up. All of the large particulate matter, if it's flowing through that half inch line, hopefully it flows all the way through and back into the tank and not into uh, these little drip lines. And if that is the case, I don't see how this could leak at all, ever. So I'm super happy with the way this project turned out. Again, we just gotta wait a few hours for all of this PVC cement to set up and then we'll be able to do our leak tests and fill this up with fish, which is what we'll be doing in our next video. Anyways guys, that's a look at the breeder rack, the wool mounted Betta barracks. We've got quite a few little tubs there to fill up and I can't wait to do that. All right guys, and that's gonna do it for this week's video. This was an all day project for sure, but I think it turned out great. And I know that once this thing is turned on and leak tested, I will have complete confidence in leaving this running 24 seven, 365 without any problems. So with that being said, we have a ton more to do down in this fish room, which we will be getting to in next week's video. Things like filling this with water, leak testing it, adding some fish to it. We also have to revisit our whole fish room vacuum project. I think I've got the kinks worked out on that. I've upgraded some components a little bit, and what I wanna do is a full test. I wanna clean all eight of my 40 gallon breeder tanks with that vacuum system and test how long it actually takes to do that. While we're doing that, I also want to fix our twin wall polycarbonate lids on our 40 gallon breeder tanks. They're dirty, they're grimy, they've been around for a couple years and I think if we can get them completely cleaned out, completely dried, and add a little bit of hot melt glue around the edges, seal them up. I think they'll stay nice and clean for the long term. We've got lots more projects to do down here, but it's gonna have to wait for next week's video. As always, if you like this video and you wanna see more, please hit the subscribe button. If you wanna help support this channel, go check out myaquariumbox.com. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.